Oh, I talk into a microphone uh, for a bit of my living, and I hate making public appearances like this because I really don't know what to say. You have something more meaningful in Asha Gill coming up after this, so this is... Really, really weird, but um, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers for inviting me. Um, I think I was here last year to spout off a bit more nonsense, so I'm glad that I'm, I'm back again. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, my name is Ezra Zaid, and I guess when Vanessa contacted me about um, this whole talk, it was about, uh, you know, how passion should determine your profession and all these kind of things. I was wondering about uh, that term, passion. You know, what it means, how do I relate to it? Um, am I a passionate person? Uh, are my actions reflective of that? All that kind of nonsense. So, and yeah. this, this quote about the fire in the belly uh, that Eileen mentioned, it was exactly something like too many family members that said, do you have a fire in your belly? Do you have a fire in your belly? Do you have a fire in your belly? I said, I don't know, I just had dinner. So, you know, who knows? <laughs> so, now, when everybody says all these kind of things, and if you have these qualities, apparently it's a very, very good thing. Uh, you know, it's a good thing. So um, every movie that you'll ever watch, every song that you'll ever hear, you know, they'll tell you all the same things. They'll tell you to love, uh, you know, to, to, to the ends of the hills. They'll tell you to live life uh, to its fullest and uh, to, give it a, to give it your all, to let loose and let go. And they'll tell you to follow your dreams and you know, all that kind of stuff, it's great. Um, because without those qualities, um, to, be, to have ambition without hunger, uh, to lack enthusiasm without energy, it's, it's to fail. And, if, and, and you, you feel shit about yourself if you don't reach those heights, it's shitty. And am I supposed to say shitty in a college? Probably not, but you know, we'll give it a go. Now, um, if you guys grew up like I did, uh, then you would have heard a, a lot of these success stories. Uh, you would have read a book, you would have had family members who achieved wonderful, tremendous things uh, about individuals who wouldn't just uh, shape themselves, uh, but the world around them. So those within your community, without your community, um, in real life and in fiction. Uh, it could be Steve Jobs of Apple, it could be Luke Skywalker of Star Wars, it could be Sir Alex Ferguson of Manchester United, it could be anyone. Calm down. <laughs> Um, it could be, you know, Bono of U2. It could be, you know, anything that, of anyone, of any particular industry that matters to you. Now, the one thing that all of these people have in common is what we've heard a lot about today, passion. Um, so everything from uh, football to the microprocessor for design, for music, uh, for freeing the galaxy from the clutches of Darth Vader. Um, all of these things come from that very simple thing called passion. And it drives them to unimaginable heights um, and it makes them the kings and queens of what they do. And it makes them pretty, pretty darn awesome. Uh, but sometimes things don't pan out. Uh, what happens then? You know, do you just abandon all the effort, all the hope, um, you know, Obama tells us, you know, that hope is a great thing. Yeah, but sometimes what happens, you know, it, does, it doesn't work out. See, then you got elected a second term. See, that, that happens. Do we just give up on all of these passions? Um, and when this happens, and everybody has gone through this at some point in their life, life happens. Uh, it smacks you in the face, it does a little dance, it, you know, waves you goodbye, and then comes back and kicks you in the nuts again, and then leaves again. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so I'd like you, in, in, as I was thinking about sort of what analogy that I can give today, uh, Man of Steel is out in the cinemas, um, and so that's very exciting. Um, I was quite excited to watch a movie. I'm sure you guys would rather be watching a movie than be here. But um, I'd like you to consider Superman and Lex Luthor. So Lex Luthor, um, you know, he's a guy who doesn't get enough airplay. It's all about Superman, you know, it's all about the big S. It's all about the red cape, the underwear on the outside, we get it. So we want to talk about Lex Luthor, who is a remarkable study uh, of a guy with passion and determination. You see, Superman, he's already got it all, right? He's uh, come into this world fully formed, I mean, handsome fella, right? Uh, you know, drunk on the rays of the yellow sun, uh, godlike powers, uh, he's practically invincible, and I mean, check out his hair, it's just, 
you know, constantly <laughs> ready to go. And this is a guy, uh, he's never had to work for, you know, for a thing in his life, yeah? Like, he works on a farm, you know, he does the whole farmer boy thing. Yeah, well, that's fine, that's cute. You know, but he's still Superman. Uh, you know, he can quite easily come along, sweep you off your feet, literally, and um, everybody would just fall over. And this guy, he just wears a pair of glasses, and everybody's like, whoa, who are you? Just, <laughs> where's a pair of glasses? That's it. You're the best. Now, Lex, on the other hand, He's a guy we gotta keep our eye on because he's a model that we can emulate. Now, he is no less, if you read the comics, if you watch TV series, Smallville counts, no less he is the smartest man in the world. He built a corporate empire. He was driven by a, a, a passion to succeed. All the while, while facing off this godlike being named Superman. And Lex Luthor, hey, he loves the world. He loves it so much that he just wants to rule it. Just a little bit of evil, just a little bit. But the evil aside, the moral of Lex's story is that he never lost his passion. No matter how many times Superman would beat him down, no matter how many times Superman would foil his cunning and ingenious plans, he would always come back fighting. You know, there'll be another way to blow up the world and all that kind of stuff. But he never gave up. He would never give up. Uh, and he is the personification of heroic, a shining example of how passion means little without hard work, a lesson in how to keep on going without the world when the world is cruel and unforgiving. I mean, another example is, you know, the Wiley Coyote and that Roadrunner. I mean, that guy just never gave up. He just kept on going and beep, beep along, he'll come up with another way. That's passion. He just wanted to blow up that little Roadrunner. He, he just he never did, but you know. Actually, most of the cartoons I grew up with is all about just blowing things up and eating people like Tom and Jerry. It's just really violent stuff. Now, um, his is a stunning quality. Um, Lex Luthor is one that every parent uh, teaches their child when they're faced uh, with the greatest of adversities. You plow through, you fight the good fight, you never give up. In failure, you will find strength. In loss, you will find hope. And all of because of an undying passion of what you believe in. For Lex Luthor, it's evil, but hey, he believes in it. He commits to it. That's the main thing. Now, for me, um, I didn't always want to um, you know, rule the world, unlike Lex. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, growing up, all I wanted to be uh, was a rock star. L literally, not like, um, you know, dad was like a decent lawyer, mom was like making cool scientific stuff with, in a, with chemistry sets in a company, and all I wanted to be was a rock star. And I hated school. I just went to school and just like, what is this? What's PMR? What's SPM? What is all these A's? Everybody's just smarter than me. It's just, shh. <laughs> and, but the, the dream of being a rock star was like still like, you know, in, in target. So, um, you know, I was in a band, you know, uh, you know, study a little bit of music, study a little bit more music. But of course, along the way, I tried not to be an absolute failure at school. So I got pretty decent grades. Uh, decent enough that at the end of my Form 6, um, I got offered uh, a scholarship to do law. Uh, uh, I think it was a Bond University uh, in Australia. And mom and dad, phew, you should have seen their faces. They were so happy. It's like, oh, my little boy's going to be low, yeah. <laughs> but, um, and, and I had that option, but I had that this rock star dream. This rock star dream was not really to be a rock star, but I wanted to be a musician. I wanted to be um, involved in music. I wanted to be a producer. I wanted to be a sound engineer. I wanted to be like this guy involved in music. And to the, the, to the much of the, 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 the most difficult year that I had with my parents was when I said to my parents, I said, I'm going to do music. So I, I give, they, they just can't believe it. I've thrown away this opportunity to do law. Uh, the opportunity to make a lot of money, I imagine, um, and uh, I, everything in, in their minds is just, oh my God, Ezra, oh my God, he's gonna live with us for the rest of our lives, you know. Like <laughs> and so uh, I do the music thing, and I do it for about four or five months. And at this point, I'm just enthusiastic. I'm performing here, performing there, performing in like when nobody else is performing. Uh, I'm studying it and all that kind of, but six, eight months in, in the environment of uh, a music college and, 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 and I guess other musicians, I lost the passion for music. 
this thing that I was gearing up for for like the better part of, I don't know, five, six years about this music, 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 gone. I don't know what sucked the passion out of it. It might have been the campus, it might have been the environment, but it just wasn't it. And so you can you imagine the conversation I had to have with my parents, like, yeah, I don't think this thing's gonna work out for me. Went up to my folks, and of course they were like, all right, we got him back, he's gonna be a lawyer. <laughs> so, so I said, hold off on the law thing, because I'll, try, I'll do a degree for you guys, and I'll study and attend some classes, and you know, come along the way. And by doing so, I spent the next four years actually in Canada. And um, I studied a whole bunch of things. And mostly I studied these courses and got into these majors, not because I found, uh, you know, the question of human civilization so fascinating and interesting. I, I, it's not that I had existential questions about life and religion. It was, I mostly entered these courses because like the hottest girls that I wanted to follow into a study group would go into those courses. I just, yeah, I'll sign up for that class. <laughs> I signed up for that class and that class and eventually I got stuck in these majors, politics and philosophy specifically because the girl that I followed into then switched majors and you know, it, it, yeah, I just got stuck. And I didn't want to like, extend my university years for more longer than I could. So I graduate. Along the way, you do a lot of silly stuff along uh, when you do in your early 20s. And you have to, because, I don't know, you've got to live life. Lah. If you don't, then you're going to end up just really old and crinkly and really angry at life, not knowing that you didn't make the most of your 20s. So I did a lot of fun stuff, a lot of great stuff, met a lot of people. Um, and I watched like a whole bunch of things, watch concerts, watch television, and all that kind of stuff. But all along this, I actually don't know what I'm going to be. I've got the backlog of me being a failure of wanting to be a musician. I've got the disappointment of a family that I'm not going to be a lawyer. I've got, uh, he's a second son. Well, of course, he's going to disappoint. Well, what else you can expect from him? So I have all of these things going on, of which um, I get a job in Canada. I, you know, I do like a whole customer sales representative thing. And it's not really, you know, when I wake up, I mean, I do it pretty well. You know, people say, hey, you want more sports channel? Yes, sir, I can do that for you. So you want more porn? Thank you very much. I'll do that for you. You're going to pay your bills. I'll do that. And I did it very well. But it was, shh, it wasn't great. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was really, really terribly boring. And um, I'd come back to Malaysia uh, to try to find myself. And a a along the way, all of the things that I haphazardly did and the things that I paid attention to and the things that I really, really enjoyed about it, whether it was um, having a pizza um, at 11.30 at night, watching Dave Letterman for like five nights in a row, and um, you know, going to a speech by uh, a professor that I didn't really know, but he was telling me something fascinating about Palestine and Israel, or it was about you know, just anything that I could grab my hands on to absorb it a little bit more so that uh, I, I, would, I would make sense of it in the end. Where am I now? And that's what is somewhat perplexing to me as well. Today, the things that I do is not really work. Um, I work with a radio station. I get a yabber off for a little bit. Apparently, they pay me at the end of the month. Um, I do this online show called That Effing Show, where um, I make fun about the nature and cause of, of politics and public figures, because everybody says stupid things. So I just want to point out that everybody else says stupid things. Um, and I'm getting to do a lot, a lot of really cool, interesting stuff. And only because that the th I realize that the things that you actually do and should feel passionate about is, is something that actually just means that, I mean, life is that bit fuller when you actually engage and embrace it. I mean, life is poor. I mean, it, it, you've got like predictability and plethora of options around you. I mean, you guys in Taylor's College, I mean, you guys got a pretty good head start right here. But the ability to uh, embrace and engage that passion that you have in you, because we can shut it out. Like, it's very easy to shut out. It's very easy to shut out because of, um, I don't know, family and stuff. And, and all these stories where we speak of these Steve Jobs and the, the, the U2s and the bonus, it's not that these stories are, are the how-to guides of what you are supposed to do they're just meant to be that, that moment of, of all why you say, well, I didn't know that you could do that. If you have that moment where somebody inspires you and say, well, I didn't know you could do that, that's all you need to stir off something else on your own. You personalize it, you make it 
your own, and hopefully along the way you don't fail. And even if you do fail, you just try again. And and I think you know, I mean, it's 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 quite pointless uh, me speaking up here because you had Sir Ken Robinson speak before on, on that video. And when I was graduating in 2006, I saw that video and I was like, oh my god, oh my god, I think he's making me feel better. I think I'm not being a failure in my life. This is going to be good. And a lot of what he says is, is, is about you know, all those good things, embracing creativity and uh, taking risks. And you know, Eileen brought up a, a many, many great points uh, earlier. And it's, uh, a lot of it is just trying to make sense of what you really, really feel passionate about. Because when you go through life doing the things that you do, what makes it less shittier is that you actually care about it. And I think with four minutes left, I'm going to end it on there. Wow, how poignant was that? Thanks, everyone.